What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul, and welcome back to another Top 10 video. In this video, I'll be going over 10 things you didn't know about Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Number 10. A PSP version of the game was planned to be released around 2007 or 2008. According to official PlayStation Magazine, it lacked the free roaming gameplay the games usually had, and felt more like a dungeon romp. The Amazon description for the game said the following, quote, Oblivion comes to the PSP with all your favorite free-form gameplay, unprecedented graphics, cutting-edge AI, character voices by acting legend Patrick Stewart, Sean Bean, Terrence Stamp, and Linda Carter, along with its award-winning soundtrack. Gamers can choose to unravel Oblivion's epic narrative at their own pace or explore the vast world in search of their own unique challenges. After the mysterious and untimely death of the Emperor, the throne of Tamriel lies empty. With the Empire ready to crumble, the gates of Oblivion are open, and demons march upon the land, laying waste to everything in their path. To turn the tide of darkness, you must find the lost heir to the throne and unravel the sinister plot that threatens to destroy all of Tamriel. Number 9. Certain shops in the Imperial City are named after restaurants in Maryland, home of Bethesda Softworks. Amongst them are the main ingredient and three brothers. Number 8. The NBC Jackman Earl of Imbel, found in the Imperial City, is actually an anagram of Jack B. Nimble from an old mid 19th century English nursery rhyme about a boy named Jack who would jump over candlesticks. He also owns a pair of unique boots, important to the Thieves Guild questline, which boosts the wearer's acrobatic skill by 50 points, allowing them to jump much higher than before. The name of the item, the Boots of spring Jack, is itself a reference to a character from English folklore. Number 7. The posters for the arena in the Imperial City are a reference to the first Elder Scrolls game, Arena. Number 6. In the backstory within the manual for Arena, the dialogue between Talon and Sia alludes that the Amulet of Kings magically alerts the Elder Council if the Emperor dies. This may be one reason why Jugar Thorn kept Uriel Septim Seven alive in oblivion rather than killing him. Number 5. The statue in Chorel in front of the South Gate is a rendition of the Pieta, one of Michelangelo's finest works. Number 4. Unlike the Nereverine of Morrowind or the last Dragonborn of Skyrim, the hero of Kvach, the playable character of Oblivion, is always depicted explicitly as male. His probable appearance in Skyrim suggests this. If the Sheogorath is encountered in Skyrim is indeed the hero of Kvach, then the quest The Mind of Madness will be the first time two playable characters meet in the Elder Scrolls series. This also might mean that the hero, now in Immortal Daedra, is the longest living protagonist in the series, over 200 years old. Number 3. In Oblivion, you can find a journal called Macabre Manifest, which belonged to a grave robber. It includes Ofer Gabings, an anvil, a travel cloak with silver and green leaf fasteners, enchanted short swords with inlaid writings, a golden ring with an inscription, and a leather-bound travel journal. This person is obviously a reference to Frodo Baggins. Ofer Gabings is an anagram for Frodo Baggins, which further cements this reference from Lord of the Rings. Upon completing the quest, you receive a ring which looks very similar to the Ring of Power from the Lord of the Rings. Number 2. There's a small bridge just past the mouth of Panther, which is east-southeast of Bravel. Underneath, you will find the remains of a dead troll, reminiscent of the children's fairy tale, Billy Goat's Gruff. You will find a poorly scrawled note on the body, explaining its failure as a bridge troll. Me worst troll ever. Nobody pay bridge troll. Me not scurry enough. Me get drunk and kill self. Troll drown. Number 1. The 2005 E3 demo video showcased a new system called Radiant AI, which gave them general goals to achieve. How the goals were to be achieved was totally up to the NPC and the environment they were in. This, however, presented problems when it was first implemented, as there were no rules for the NPCs to follow, only goals. This would cause many problems for the player, including quest lines being broken. Some examples are an unseen NPC going around town, buying up all the armor from the town stores. And another was an NPC important for the Dark Brotherhood questline, would end up being found dead, as he was also a skooma dealer and was killed by other NPCs needing the skooma. As a result, many of the behavior of the Radiant AI had to be toned down significantly for the game's release. Alright, that's going to do it for this top 10 video about Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 video about any game or game character. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.